So I guess uh, we could get started. It's great to see you all here. Okay. Uh, let me share the, the screen. Well, I am going to share. Okay. Um. Okay, should should I start, uh, Grace or HN? Yeah, I, are I you seeing the screen, by the way? Yeah, I can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we should we should start recording, or it it is already recording. Yeah, the recording already started. Okay, nice. Then uh, then let me introduce myself. Uh, I am uh, Jose Jose Luis Muñoz. In fact, I am an associate professor at the uh, University Polytechnic, uh, Polytechnical University of Catalonia, UPC, and uh, an old, old friend of uh, Jordi Bailina, let's say. And uh, currently, uh, I am collaborating with the uh, Zika IBM project. We have a project between the university and, and the Polygon. Um, by the way, here, here are, there are also some of the people that uh, is in the team at the university, like Hector, I think, is here. So, and uh, essentially, we are a team that uh, we are supporting the project by uh, writing technical documentation, writing papers, and doing like pre audits and, and checking that everything is uh, okay. Uh, so, this is uh, our main tasks. So and and today I'm going to explain you uh, <clears throat> how to how, how the system uh, I mean some of the pieces that are uh, that built the the that built our system and uh, <clears throat> we agree to use a common example between a scroll and us uh, that is a Fibonacci series and and we're going to see essentially how to prove uh, that a computation about a Fibonacci series is correct. With our model, which is mainly based on a state machine, and I'm going to explain uh, what is a state machine in a minute. And uh, then Haichen will do like the same, but for a circuit model based in Halo 2. Okay, so I mean, I will try to do the, ex the explanation and then <clears throat> highlight whenever possible the, the differences. Uh, I would like to say also that you can interrupt at me at any time and ask a question live if, if you want. Uh, and I will also leave a little bit of room for questions after some explanations, okay? So yeah, let's go. Um, and this is like, uh, what, what I'm going to explain today is like the hello world uh, example of proving something that is built in the model of a state machine. And, uh, if I knew I was the first, maybe I would uh, put some differences, but maybe you are more used to the, uh, or I don't know your background, but maybe you are used to the circuit model in which, you know, you have inputs and then gates, and then these gates are uh, half out outputs, which are the inputs of uh, other gates and so on. Okay, so yeah, this is like the circuit model. And in the circuit model, I mean, you, you have like several several values at, at each stage of the circuit, okay? And this, we can have more or more values here, less values here, okay? And less values here and more values here. And well, this, the circuit is, is, uh, is tailored to the computation that we want to do, okay? Circuits are really nice and are a very, a very powerful uh, way of proving stuff, but, um, but they have also, I mean, there are trade-offs, obviously. Um, well, when circuits suffer more is when there are a lot of branches because in, in the circuit in general, you have to, or maybe HN can provide more insights about this, but in, in general, you have to uh, unroll all the branches and, and managing, uh, managing branches, ifs, uh, force, and so on is more complex than in a state machine. In a state machine, 
the state machine model is this model that you see here in which uh, we have like in each step of the computation, we have the same number always of uh, rows, of uh, values per row, okay? And uh, essentially the state machine, in a state machine, you, you change from one state to the next one uh, and to the next one. And you always follow the same rules to change from one state to the next one. Um, and uh, in a pure state machine, uh, in fact, we are, we are doing some, yeah, we are uh, modifying a little bit the paradigm, but in the basic paradigm of a state machine, the uh, you have only relationship relationships between consecutive rows. Okay, you, you don't go further. Okay, uh, well, this has also this simplifies a little bit the way of building the constraints between these rows. Okay, um, so. Yep, this is, this is the general idea of a state machine. And this slide is very important because it summarizes what we are going to see today. Today, we're going to see how to create, how to prove uh, the execution of a uh, Fibonacci. In, uh, in particular, I choose the, the multiplicative Fibonacci, uh, okay? And um, well, to prove the execution of of, uh, of this multi of this Fibonacci series, we need to build an execution trace. The execution trace is uh, is uh, a matrix, okay? It's a matrix of values. These values belong to a field. It's a finite field. It's a number. It's a finite number. And um, as I said, we have relationships between one row and the next one or the between each pair of rows, okay? And this, this we, we can have like relationships between, for example, we have here a relationship between this uh, value and this other value. And here we have a relationship between these three values. I mean, the relationship can be between values of the same row or with the previous row, for example, okay? And, and these relationships are repeated uh, all over the time, okay? We will see later that at the end we have to do something to make this relationship also hold between the last and the first. I mean, the next row for the last is the first, in fact, okay? So yeah, we will see how to manage this. Um, and, and then uh, essentially we have uh, the piece of code that generates the execution trace is, is in our case, we call it the executor, okay? The executor is the piece of, software that builds the execution trace. And the executor can build different execution traces. Uh, I mean, the executor is building the execution trace of some computation, but we can do this computation using different inputs, okay? We, if we change the inputs, then we have another execution trace of the same computation. Changing the inputs, some columns of the execution trace will change, okay? so. Um, so these are what this type of columns are what uh, sorry what uh, what we call committed columns okay these committed columns change from one execution to another execution of the same computation and the execution the executions are different because we provide we're providing different inputs uh, we, we have also some constant uh, constant columns, which do not depend on the input. I mean, they are always the same, and these are constant columns, or uh, in the literature, probably you are going to find the name preprocessed. Okay, so we have also preprocessed uh, columns, and uh, our, uh, our uh, constraints or relations between these values can involve both committed and constant uh, columns, okay? Um, in many solutions, the identities that the trace must fulfill, they are hard-coded in the, in the code. But in, in our solution, in the Polygon Zika IBM solution, you, the, we, we, we have a domain-specific language, which is called PIL, to define these identities. So in fact, uh, we are building one computation. We, we are building all the system for one computation, which is the which is a, a, a Zika EBM 
in, it's, it's something, it's a state machine that is able to prove executions of the Ethereum virtual machine. But in general, the tools that we are developing could be could be used for other purposes, and you can you could generate other types of computations beyond uh, an EVM. It is true that we are building uh, all the pieces to to, to prove the, the EVM, in fact. Okay, but uh, PIL, in fact, is a general tool that you can use to build anything you want. As I said, we are building the Zika EVM. Okay, so. Yeah, these are the main pieces here. We have some inputs. We have an executor. The executor will create the execution trace, reading some inputs when needed. Uh, in the uh, in the trace, we have call we have uh, constant columns and committed columns or variable columns. Okay, then what is next? We take the execution trace, take the pill, which are the relationships that this execution trace must fulfill, and then we put this inside of one of the other tools that we have developed, which is called PillStark. Uh, PillStark essentially takes the execution trace, takes the relationships that the trace must uh, fulfill and generates a proof, okay? Generates a proof that in general is uh, succinct. I mean, it's small and fast to verify. Um, well, we will, we will talk about, this talk is about uh, how, how, I mean, giving more details about this process, okay? But the takeaway is, is just, if you want to take this slide, this is the summary. Okay, so to, then we need to, to start somewhere and the typical way in, in which you start is the core of this, the core of everything is designing the execution trace. We need to des design our execution trace, how many columns we are going to have, and which are the relationships between these columns, okay? So this is the beginning of the process. And then we build an executor and then we put all this stuff into the pillar star, okay? So let's start uh, creating this execution trace or defining this execution trace, which by the way, is not going to be extremely difficult because the multiplicative Fibonacci is very friendly with the execution trace. I mean, yeah, we have, for other types of computations, we had bigger challenges, but uh, okay. Well, this is not going to be a big challenge. So in fact, we are going to build the, you can build it in, in many ways. In fact, I mean, this is an open, the design can be very different. I think that in the first day I saw, yeah, doing the Fibonacci with three, with three columns. But in this case, I'm going to do it uh, with uh, just uh, two at the moment. Uh, later, we will see that we, we will need another one. Okay, so the, the idea is to create, to use a state machine. The state is defined by two columns or by two registries, and I call them A and B, okay? And then this, uh, I, I always have these two, um, these two registries, and they are evolving from one state to the other. Um, okay, so um, then what we're going to put on A and what we're going to put in B, as you may imagine, since the Fibonacci, I mean, well, I didn't say anything about the Fibonacci, but a, a certain term of the Fibonacci, as the term X, I don't know, is always the uh, the next, the term I of the Fibonacci is the multiplication in this case, because it's the multiplicative one, of the previous two terms, okay? I minus one times I minus, minus two, okay? So <clears throat> I need to do this multiplication. So I'm going to store here the values of the, in A and B in the initial state, I'm going to store the initial conditions of my multiplicative Fibonacci. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then what, what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to move this value here because I need the previous, I mean, I'm going to multiply these two and store the multiplication here in B plus one here. And then I'm going to move this here because I will need the multiplication again of these two. Okay, so this is essentially the trick. So in state zero, I'm, I'm starting with uh, two initial values, let's say two and one. And then what I do is, I need to copy, and this is going to be a relationship, a pill in, in, that we're going to, in our case, we're going to, to describe this with, with pill. So one pill relationship will say that the value of this 
registry in the previous state should be the same as the value in registry A in the next uh, in the next state. And uh, the other relationship is essentially that B, the value of B, is the multiplication of the two. Okay, so as you see, V is two because two times one is two. So here, I don't know, B is four because two times two is four. Okay, so I copy here and then I here I store the multiplication. Okay, if, uh, okay, if, if you see the relationships that we're, that we're using are this one. Okay, so A, the, the value of the A registry in the next, uh, state is the value of the B registry in the previous one and the next value of the B registry in the next state better said is the multiplication of the two values of the previous state okay um, then this uh, we have a bunch of values here and uh, we need to prove them and in order to to do the proof and, and in a succinct way, we need to, uh, we're going to do the, the proofs with, uh, with instead of uh, relationships between values, we're going to do uh, relationships between polynomials. And we're going to interpolate these columns into a polynomial. Let's say A of X, and then this is going to be B of X. And uh, the values that uh, we are going, I mean, all A of X is a polynomial that is going to have some value, let's say value two, and uh, this is the, well, this is the y or the value of the polynomial is going to be two at uh, the, uh, at, well, this is the first value that I'm interpolating. And I'm going to interpolate in a special, special group, which is the famous group of root, is a group of roots of unity, uh, which essentially is a group of uh, values, okay? These values form a group. And uh, it's a cyclic group. So it, you start with uh, some value and then you, it's a modular operation all the time. You, you are uh, multiplying a main modulo and then uh, you go back to this one here. Okay, so it's a cyclic group. And we're, in, we're, we're going to interpolate in this cyclic, cyclic group that uh, has order or size uh, is a power of two because then we can do the interpolations in, in a very fast way using the FFT. Okay, well, these are technical details about saying that uh, we're going to take this column and create a polynomial from, from this column, okay? And the procedure is to, <clears throat> uh, we need to find in our field, we need to find uh, a group a, a group of roots of unity that is a power of two, and we do the interpolation in this, in this uh, group, okay? So we are transforming our uh, setting uh, instead of uh, values, we operate with uh, polynomials. Okay, and um, we can express this. Uh, the I mean, this is the these are the constraints or the relationships that I have in my uh, multiplicative Fibonacci series. Um, with uh, yeah, let me let me close Telegram. Sorry, it's disturbing a little bit. Okay, so. Um, I, um, I, here I am, uh, this is the relationships between values and then this is the relationship we're using these polynomials, okay? <clears throat> I'm saying here that uh, the, the polynomial V of X, it, it will be the same as, as the polynomial A of X, but, well, A of X, but multiplied by omega, omega, which is the root of unity, uh, is the next root of unity. I mean, I am interpolating this value in omega zero, omega to the zero, which is one. I am interpolating this value in omega. I'm interpolating this value in omega square and so on. Okay, so what? remember that I wanted to say that, uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, this one is this one. I mean, in all the rows, okay? This is this, this is this and so on. Okay, so this is expressed like this. I'm, I'm saying that, a of x time omega, the next value of a of x, the next interpolated value of a of x is equal to b of b of x, okay? And this is only valid at x equal to 
x equal to values of the group of roots of unity. Okay. So, well, this is the relationship expressed in, uh, in, in our setting, which was an interpolation of these values in, in, the, in a group of roots of unity. And uh, my other expression is this one here, is uh, the next value of V is the multiplication of the previous values of A and B. Okay, well, this is what we are saying. Okay, and maybe when we are, when we are here, uh, there's a special case. I don't know if everybody is seeing this, this special case. I, I want, for example, the first, uh, the first polynomial identity, this is going to be described in PIL, by the way. Uh, in our first polynomial identity, I'm describing this relationship, okay? So I suppose that you see that there is a problem here, which is, well, this should be equal to, I mean, gr the group of roots of unity is cyclic, so I should, should be the same as this one here, okay? The, the next A is the, previous, is the first one, and, but this is not true, I mean, this number is not this number, okay? So we, have, we need to fix this. And <clears throat> we say that uh, our state machine is not cyclic. In uh, circuits, in general, you don't need this, uh, you, you don't need to enforce this cyclic behavior. I mean, you have your circuit and you enforce the relationship between all the gates and wires and so on, and, and that's it. But in a state machine, the state, in a state machine, the identities should hold from one uh, state to the next one and the next state the next state after the last one is the first one so we need to, to we need we need to modify our uh, identity so that this row here fulfills well i mean the identities should allow me to go from the last row to the previous to the first row okay to the first row which is the next row of this one here so um, yeah, so we have a problem here, and because our state machine is not cyclic, okay, is is something that uh, is a problem in state machines. It is not a problem in uh, circuit-based uh, approaches. Mm. Well, for this, we are going to use a trick that, in fact, everybody uses, which is introduce a new polynomial that it will act as a selector. In fact, okay, this is similar to how a scroll and uh, and uh, how to do, do this stuff. To achieve the cyclic behavior, I'm going to introduce this new column, which is column C, and it, it will be zero everywhere except in the last, uh, in the last row. And uh, we will allow the cyclic behavior by modifying a little bit our, uh, our equations. And essentially I'm, I'm, I'm saying here that, uh, okay, I mean, this should be this one if C is zero, but in the last one, it doesn't need to, uh, we don't need to check this, okay? In fact, what, what I'm going to say is that uh, the next value of A should be A zero, for example, okay? So, and this, uh, this is the modification of, uh, this, this is how I need to modify my uh, identity, okay? I just need to, I, I will say, uh, okay, the next value of A is going to be the previous value of B if C of X is zero, okay? Because then one minus zero is one, so it, this thing's whole. And uh, this is when Z of X is zero, this part here is cancels and we are not taking into account. But when Z of X is one, then we are not going to check this. I mean, when uh, we are not going to check this thing, what we're going to check is that the next value of A is A0, okay? So the next in the, just uh, in the last row, what I'm going to say is that the next value of A is going to be A0, which is two in this case, is the initial condition, okay? So we arrange our, arrange our identity so that we achieve this cyclic behavior. Um, <clears throat> and the same for the other one, okay? Uh, this part here is our previous uh, identity, and, and then this part here is changed. I mean, 
this, this part here is when z of x is one, then we enforce that the next value of b is the initial condition v zero. Okay, now everything works okay. So, yep. So we have um, we have our constraints here. Okay, and um, for example, I mean these two constraints that I'm defining here that they are defining how uh, how we go from one state to the next one. So these are called transition constraints, okay? By the way, this is this is uh, defined by the people from Star from Starware, okay? This is the the jargon that they use for this type of uh, for this type of constraints. And um, and we can also enforce some other constraints, which in this case would be that uh, the initial the initial conditions uh, they're going to be twenty three and forty six. So, um, so here we when when we when I enforce the initial value to twenty three and forty six, we I need to put it here on on the on the identities, and then I have like these identities which are half transition, half boundary constraint. A boundary constraint, by the way, is a constraint that enforces that one of the values is, one of the squares of, of my execution trace has a certain value. So in this case, uh, if I put A23 and A023 and B046, I'm, I'm, I'm enforcing the initial values of A and B. So these constraints are like, uh, half transition, half boundary, okay? We're going to see how to, in fact, we're going to change this setting a little bit in, in just a moment, okay? So I can have like pure transaction, pure transition constraints, which are just defining uh, the transition from one state to the next one. I, I can have pure boundary. And our previous constraint, in fact, were like transition plus boundary because we were defining the two things as you see here, okay? In general, we don't have this type of transitions of uh, uh, constraints or identities because, uh, yeah, because the general in the general settings, you only need to define transition constraints and some specific boundary constraints. The problem here is that, uh, okay, I, I am in my, in my uh, identity, I am defining the initial values of the Fibonacci, but in general, you, you would prove, you, you, would, you will not prove the, the something like that. I mean, the initial values of our Fibonacci, I mean, this is not really important in general. What, we, what you will prove is that the Fibonacci at a, of a certain term is a certain value. So typically we will not give these initial conditions, but we will check is that uh, the value of a certain, uh, the value of a, of a certain row uh, and column is, is a particular value like here, okay? So essentially we are not going to include the initial conditions in our constraints. So, we uh, we remove the part of the identity that fixes the initial values. So if we remove this part, you can go to whichever initial condition you want. And we're going to, we're going to, to remove this one here. And now these are pure transaction, pure, uh, pure transition constraints, okay? Which is more typical. And then we're going to put a boundary constraint saying uh, the value of, of a certain row should be whatever. For example, I would say that the value of A at, the, at this root of unity, which is the, I mean, in, in my trace is the value 1024, okay? Because, because it is starting zero, okay? I, I will, I, I want to enforce that this value is, well, I computed by the way, starting with some inputs, I computed this value, okay? So, well, I want to enforce that, um, I want to check these this, uh, three constraints, which means, okay, you have computed a, 
you have computed a multiplicative Fibonacci series. I don't know which initial values you choose, but you have computed this Fibonacci series and it is, and the value of uh, 2000 and in this uh, root of unity is this one, okay? I want to create a proof for, for you about this. By the way, all my operations are in a certain field. Uh, the field that we are using is a Goldilocks-like field with a prime of, uh, it's, it's, it's about 64 bits, okay? So it's, this is my, my field. The field that we are using in uh, the ZKIBM of Polygon is with this prime, okay? We borrow this, this field from our friends of Polygon Zero. Okay, so this is the uh, prime that we are that we are using. Um, okay, so all my polynomials will have, and and all my execution trays will have values in this field. Okay, so so the operation that I'm doing is uh, multiplication and then modulo this field, this this prime, and then multiplying and modulo this prime. So. Uh, and this is the number after doing 1,023 operations, multiplications, uh, and a modulo p, okay? Starting with some conditions that I'm not showing here, okay? In fact, you, I will show you later which, which were these conditions. Okay, so, and, and these are the three, mm, the three constraints that did, I mean, now what we define is a, is a language, which is the PIL, the polynomial identity language, is just for describing these three uh, identities. Okay. Um, okay. So, in fact, you are not going to write uh, the uh, this uh, identity. It's not writing. It's not written like this. We write. We write this like. We write this equation or this identity like this. Okay, all all our identities should be are are expressions equal to zero. Okay, and they are equal to zero in the roots of unity. Okay, so here I'm saying that uh, a of x uh, minus this value should be zero. This this should be zero when x is equal to omega to the uh, to the 2023, okay? Well, it's technical stuff, but we write this like this. Oh, sorry. Okay. So now I should perform my computation. So, uh, well, in fact, the previous number that you saw is just, uh, it's just doing the, the, multiplic the multiplicative Fibonacci choosing these two values, okay? If you start multiplying these two 1,024 times and doing modulo P, you will, you will get the number that uh, we saw before, okay? I put, I'm putting you here a little bit of a small JavaScript uh, program to do this, okay? Um, okay, so up to now, uh, it's a little, it's, you know, it's a little bit, uh, it's a fast uh, explanation of how these things work. Maybe we should, I mean, uh, uh, but I think it's enough to understand that we need to define the uh, identities, okay, in, in our trace. So in our trace was simpler. It, it had like three columns, okay? The column A, the column B, and the column C. The column A, and B, these two are committed. The column Z, remember that is zero everywhere and one in the last one, and C is not going to change whichever input values I put. So this is a constant or pre-processed column. So in my execution trace, I just have three columns, okay? And, and the first thing is that I need to prove the computation I need uh, an executor that creates in the case of the Fibonacci is just these three columns, okay? And uh, depending on the inputs, the executor will need to compute 
recompute A and B each time, but C is going to be always the same. Okay. Mm, okay. So this is the executor. Um, well, this is the code of the executor. It's very simple, essentially. Okay. It's just creating A, B, and, and C is going to be fixed. I mean, it's going to be zeros everywhere and one in the last. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, I'm going to provide you a, a repo with uh, the software with uh, some test that you can do and test everything that I'm going to explain today. Okay, so perfect. Then uh, I started my process defining uh, defining the trace, which is the shape of the trace, how many columns. These columns are committed, constant, okay. Then I defined the peel, the relationships between these columns, okay. And then, and, and then I created a piece of software that creates this uh, trace, this execution trace. And what, which I call, uh, which in our project we call, uh, we call it executor, and then uh, starts the process of proving, okay, proving the stuff. So the executor, the executor essentially give, gives gives me a matrix of values. Let's say that we have this ex this execution trace so with uh, these four columns. By the way, before starting the proving process, this is a good moment to maybe ask you if you have any questions and let me see if I can see the chat or whatever. Um, uh, Grace, is there, is there any question in the chat or, uh, or, or, or something like that? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm here, but uh, we haven't, uh, we haven't received any questions in the chat. Okay, perfect. I don't know if, uh, if anyone wants to unmute and ask a question? I if not, essentially clear. we're going to prove now the system, yeah. Thank you, Jose. He has been very clear so far. Okay. <clears throat> okay, um, I, I had to explain a little bit fast that all this stuff of the roots of unity, the cyclicity and so on, but yeah, you can check it. Uh, yeah, you can check it maybe after. Um, okay, so then uh, how the process of proving uh, this uh, execution trace works. Um, as I said, we are, we, we've developed this, this tool here, which is called Pillastark, okay? And, and, and in Pillastark, you provide an execution trace, you provide a pill definition. The pill definition contains several, several things, mainly some names, names for the columns, okay? That uh, each column is going to be transformed in a polynomial. But uh, yeah, we need to provide names for these polynomials. Um, in this case, uh, A, B, C, D, E, but in the, G, in the real CKVM, you will see uh, other more meaningful names. Um, so it, it provides also some name spacing. I mean, you can, you can create several namespaces and, and polynomials can belong to a different namespaces. Um, and, and then, uh, yeah, we provide the execution trace, uh, the pill. This can be more complex. We can provide even different pieces of the execution trace and so on. But in this simplified example, in this simplified example, I'm just providing an execution trace with just three columns. Well, in fact, the one that is constant is this one here. So I'm providing this execution trace. And uh, well, what to some extent, I mean, this process, the, the process of generating the proof is quite automatic. I mean, with with Bill Stark, is this process is is automatic, okay? But we're going to see how it works, okay? But as a software tool, uh, your main work as a developer, let's say, is just create, define the execution trace, define the pill, and uh, implement your executor, and, and then you provide this to the pillar stack, and then this process is quite automatic, okay? But let's see what happens inside. The first thing is that the uh, pillar stack, it will create uh, polynomials from each column, okay? By interpolating in the roots of unity. Uh, well, in fact, yeah, interpolating in the roots of unity in some domain, in fact, okay, so that we're going to call it G, okay? Uh, 
In fact, well, it is not exactly a root of unity, but doesn't matter. It's just a technical technical detail. But we 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 are interpolating uh, our values over an interpolation domain and getting polynomials. Okay. Then the next step is that uh, for each polynomial, we create a we create a cryptographic representative of, of each of these polynomials. Okay. Yeah, I know that uh, for people that are from cryptographers will say, "What, what do you mean crypt cryptographic uh, representative?" Uh, I will, I will. It's a commitment, okay? <laughs> so we create a, a, a crypto a, a thing that is a, a smaller than the polynomial, and and it is a perfect cryptographic representative of this polynomial. Okay, so we create these uh, representatives, which are going to be polynomial commitments. And then we prove, I mean, uh, this is, uh, yeah, the first day say, said more or less the same. I mean, and then we're going to prove our identities with these representatives in a random point. And uh, if you prove an identity in a random point of a big field, this means if the identity holds in a random point of a big field, it means it holds everywhere because the, the probability that this, uh, doesn't happen is uh, overwhelmingly small. Okay, so these are uh, this is the strategy that uh, this is the strategy that everybody uses, by the way. Okay, so um, the representatives are created with some polynomial commitment scheme, uh, and then, as I said, the verifier will provide some random number in the field and say, okay, provide me the evaluation of your polynomials, and then I check. Well, I have a proof of this, uh, that the values at this random point are okay. Uh, and, and then I check my identities, okay? Um, here, the two projects that you are going to see in these uh, talks, we are using different approaches. Uh, scroll is using Kate uh, or KGC is better said. I mean, Kate is the first one, but uh, there are other people. So let's say KGC. And then, but we are using a fry based approach. Okay, we are using another, a different polynomial commitment scheme. Okay, uh, and then, uh, well, let, let me sh let me let me show you a little bit. Uh, uh, well, let, let's let's finish this, and then I will show you better. Say it, I will show you a little bit about how fry works in a high level. Okay, well, this is the well, this is the lemma that says that checking a random point is enough. And then I check in my random point that all the identities hold, okay? Well, we, we still have a minor technical problem uh, that is that, okay, my, my identities are not, uh, I mean, my identities are only valid in the interpolation domain in H. So I, I but I want to check in a random point of, uh, of, of, of all the field, well, uh, yeah, I also talk about this the first day. And yeah, essentially um, what we need is uh, to check, check this, I mean, do this, uh, check these identities, uh, but uh, I need to check that these identities can be divided by Z of H. Well, I use C of H as the, it's a polynomial that is zero in all the roots of, of unity. So. Well, it's a technical stuff to just uh, be able to use the polynomial commitment scheme, okay? You have to check this divided by this polynomial. Um, okay, so I need to divide all my equations or said in another way, I have to multiply all the, uh, all the identities by say of H and then this check is done in any value of the field, okay? So X, belonging to FP. Um, so then the verifier, the verifier takes one random one random value and then uh, gives give me all the values of the polynomials that I need to check, to do, to do the checks on, uh, on a random point. And if there the questions hold, then it means it's okay. Um, okay. Yeah, as I said again, is you know this is a very quick talk and uh, it's a high level talk. Okay, so um, 
then uh, which uh, proving system do we have? I mean, we have many. Uh, here I, ha I have the, the, I put like the, Mm, the proving systems that uh, are mm, more cl more related with our uh, setting, and uh, well, essentially, I'm, I, we are using Fry. Okay, L let's jump this one and let's explain how Fry works. Okay, for people that doesn't, I mean, maybe many some of you know Kate or Kate was explained a little bit the first day, so I'm going to explain in a high level how Fry works. Okay, so I have here my polynomial. Okay, uh, my polynomial evaluated. I mean, this is my my polynomial is just a set of values of the computational trace. Okay, and then uh, how Fry works? Well, the first thing is that okay, I have my my polynomial in coefficients. I mean, sorry, I have my polynomials in evaluations. Okay, I, I have evaluations of the polynomial of my polynomial. The first thing is that I need to interpolate this. Into the uh, these are values. I need to obtain a polynomial, okay, in coefficients. So I interpolate the mm, polynomial of the trace that is expressed as a set of values as a column, and uh, I interpolate this, and and then once I have it on on coefficients, then I expand, okay. The the first step of Fry is expanding uh, this. Uh, in in our case, by the way, we we do an ex, we we expand by two, okay. Um, so we have more values describing my polynomial, okay. And then in Fry, what we do is Merkleize, okay. We create a Merkle root, uh, we create a hash uh, tree with all the values, and I obtain like the first root, okay. And then I start the process of uh, doing what is called random falls of the polynomials. I mean, I take this polynomial and then using, well, using an, uh, well, uh, not too many diff technical diff details here, but doing an FFT equation like equation, I just uh, create like a smaller version of the polynomial that has half of the size and uh, half of, and the evaluation domain is also half, okay? And to create this polynomial, this smaller polynomial, the verifier sends me one random, one randomness. And then I commit to this root here. And then uh, the verifier again sends me another randomness and then I create another a smaller polynomial and so on, okay? And uh, this is the, the way, uh, I mean, what we're doing here is committing to a big polynomial and then to a smaller polynomial, smaller polynomials that are related. All of them are related, and and this is what this is what we it is going to provide us the soundness of the system, because then what uh, then this is the first phase, which is the commitment of the polynomial, and then in the, in the, in another phase, in the when I need to check that the polynomial is is correct, then. Uh, then uh, we create some, I mean, uh, we uh, have to pass some random queries here, okay? And, and it says, okay, give me this, give me the value of this uh, value here, this value here, and this value here, okay? And, and I need to check that these three values are consistent with the three, with other three values here, and with uh, other values here and so on. Okay, we. I mean, this is a very high level, but we check the consistency here. Okay, and uh, what? Uh, and then we are proving that, in fact, uh, I now I realize I didn't say what we're going to prove. We want to prove that the degree of the polynomial is less than a certain number. Okay, and uh, this can be translated into a setting of opening of obtaining the value of the polynomial in this value. Okay. Um, the nice thing of this uh, system of Fry is that uh, we just need to uh, do hashes. I mean, the ol the only primitive cryptographic primitive that we use is is as a is a hash, and this is easy to. I mean, creating. Uh, I mean, th this is this doesn't have any any trusted setup or. Uh, or any strange primitive that uh, it is easy, it's difficult to implement. This is just a hash function. 
and uh, it has benefits. The main problem is that uh, proofs are bigger, are big compared to uh, Kate or, or Plonk or well, to, compared to Kate essentially. Okay. So uh, I will tell you later what we're going to do. Okay. With, uh, or maybe, um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to tell you here, by the way. Okay. So the Pil, Pil Stark essentially does this process of taking the computation trace, interpolating the polynomials, then evaluating these polynomials in a bigger domain, then creating some other polynomials that are related with this bigger one. Okay. And, and then check that all the stuff is consistent. Okay. Um, and this finally can be used to prove that the polynomial has a, the, the evaluation of the polynomial at, at a certain random point is, is, is some value. And then uh, checking our identities in this random point, we are checking that uh, the computation is well done. Okay, this is the high level of all the process. Um, well, the only stuff missing maybe in this high level this description is that uh, to do the proof, I mean, the fry, fry creates quite big, big proofs, okay? So here, as Jordi explained the first day, we are using recursion uh, techniques, okay? So in fact, our state machines, in fact, we have several, our state machines generate like quite a big proof, and, and, but this proof is verified, the verifier of fry, the fry verifier, is is the is the is is doing these queries and checking and checking these Merkel proofs and well it's doing all this stuff. What we what we do is create a circuit, okay, or it, well, in fact, we create a circuit that uh, validates this proof, and then we prove that this is proving this one correct, and we use uh, recursion here so that the final proof is much smaller, okay. Um, in the in this talk, uh, in fact, uh, I'm uh, I'm going to give you some some repo. Here you have the repo, and and, and in this directory of the Zika IBM DocSoft repo, you, you can find the uh, this example that uh, that we were talking about, the M, M multiplicative Fibonacci state machine, the non-recursive version. Okay, it's just uh, it generates just a fry proof for everything. Okay, um, I'm going to show you in, in I, I'm going to quickly show you the software. Okay, so you can play a little bit and uh, I'm going to run it to see how it works. Uh, but essentially you will see not much. Uh, and, and yeah, you can take a look at the software. Okay, which is uh, a nice way to, to learn. And uh, what else? I mean, because from now, okay, we prove a Fibonacci. But this is like a hello world example. Uh, it is quite far from the EVM. So, which are the next steps? The next steps is that the transition between one state and the next one is going to be uh, is going to be driven or it, it is going to be done according to an instruction. Okay, so here we have some instructions that say how to change from one state to the next one. Okay. Um, and we are going to go from this simple executor, executor that, I mean, all the logic of the Fibonacci is, is inside the executor, okay? We, we were going to move to this other paradigm in which uh, the executor, in fact, creates the execution trace according to some instructions that are given by a program. And this program is what uh, it is programmed in our assembly language. Okay, it is called Zika Yasm. Uh, in the first day that Jordi did like a general overview of everything, he showed a little bit of this assembly. Okay, this uh, assembly is just a program that the execution the executor is reading, and as it is reading the each line of, or it reads an, an, a line of an instruction and then creates one row of the execution trace and so on. Okay. And from time to time, it needs inputs. 
So then it reads the inputs and completes the rows. Okay. Um, the on the next uh, session, which is going to be Monday, uh, from Polygon, uh, we uh, uh, Carlos, Carlos, which is here by the way, Carlos Matallana will come and he will explain you more about this part here. Okay, about the how it is built this program and how essentially this program what is what it does is is interpret all the transactions and execute all all the opcodes i mean generate an execution trace that proves the correct execution of each code of each opcode of each transaction okay um okay so now let me uh yeah, let me just run the example. Okay, we're, we're not going to have much more time than running the example. Uh, let me stop sharing this one and share this one. <clears throat> okay, Grace, uh, you're seeing the screen. I see With it. All good. Okay, nice. nice. Uh, if if you go to this uh, to the link that I uh, by the way I will provide all these uh, slides. Uh, you will have them available. And uh, if you go to the link, which is essentially the ZKIBM DocSoft, if you go there inside, you will find the M the multiplicative Fibonacci state machine with the non-recursive proof. Okay, which is the simplest possible proof using fry and you will find all, all these files here okay and uh, which are these files well uh, let's start with the pill okay so this is the pill for our uh, fibonacci state machine okay so it's just uh, it's a constant polynomial that uh, is last instead of c i call it here is last which is zero 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 and one when it, when it is last then we have two polynomials a and b um well, the pill enforces that, uh, well, uh, we create an intermediate definition here called AB, which is the multiplication of A and B. Uh, and, and then our transition const constraints, which should be familiar to you, okay, which is uh, uh, the next value of A should be the previous value of B, except in the is last. Here, we are not checking anything. And the next value of B should be the multiplication of A and B, except in the last uh, row, okay? Uh, yeah, currently the pill doesn't allow you to multiply three polynomials. You can only multiply two polynomials. So here I just create this in intermediate definition. And then I define the boundary constraint, okay? Saying that uh, the value of A at, uh, this is the way in which uh, instead of the, of putting here a number, instead here of putting a certain number that I want to prove, what I say is, okay, uh, I mean, in the trace, you will find the value of A. So put here the value of, put, put here the last value of polynomial A, okay? As, as uh, the boundary constraint that is checking that A at the last value will, be, will have this value here. So this is the pill, essentially, descriptions about which are the relationships that the execution trace must uh, fulfill. And also we are giving here the size, uh, the, the number of rows of the execution trace. Um, well, this is like a DSL, a domain specific language that uh, you can compile with Pilcom. Uh, I, I just provide you the compiled version of this. Okay, but if you see, I mean, this is much easier to be read by the prover okay so we are com we compile this to this J json parsed version um then what else we provide the input okay for our fibonacci computation so these are the initial values of our fibonacci uh and then before going to the well the executor the executor is just creating the constant polynomials and the execution trace i mean it's building all the values of a and b multiplying essentially Okay, so well, we're doing these multiplications modulo p, so we are going, we are doing these operations in the uh, Goldilocks field, and uh, then well, 
the proving stuff is configurable. I mean, uh, in a in a in Fry, you can configure many things. You can configure how big is going to be the expansion of the of the first polynomial. How many steps do you want to? I mean, in uh, in the example, I just uh, half each polynomial, but you can do steps with bigger compression. Let's say. I mean, you can configure many stuff, and this is uh, configured here. Okay, this is the number of bits of my polynomial in the trace. As I said, I am uh, creating, uh, I'm expanding by two. Then the evaluation. This is these are the number of queries, these random queries to check that the polynomial, the the opening is correct. And uh, well, I'm doing the hash, which type of hash I'm doing. In fact, it says here Goldilocks, but well, what we are doing here are Poseidon hashes. And then how many how many steps? I mean, in fact, we do like three. We are we, we are only like commit three roots of, of three different polynomials. Okay. Well, essentially, this is stuff for the fry. Okay. And then the the big one, and I'm finishing is uh, this one that essentially reads all the configuration here, all the configuration. And, and uh, essentially generates uh, is doing everything here is generating is calling the executor to generate the trace and, and then is uh, doing the setup which is uh, is creating the the merkel trees and evaluations of the constant stuff and then here we're generating the proof and here I'm, we're validating the proof and if everything goes okay we should see valid proof and well it is this is what what I expect to see. So you can do this with npm run proof. Wow. Let's see a little bit the output, and with this, I'm going to finish. So oh, I think there is no space here. Here, mm, bad thing here. Um, yeah, you need to install. I don't have install here. Sorry. Oh. Uh, it's a JavaScript uh, mini project. So, yeah, you have to install. And I have node models here. And then npm run proof. And here you will see how it starts generating the trace. Then it's creating all these Merkel roots and then doing the queries and then it checks that uh, everything is okay and says okay the proof is valid okay well the thing here is that you take a look at this code okay and and is uh, with some comments and some nice names for the variables so I, I hope that you could understand all this um okay well uh, this is just an hour. It's just uh, like all the system in a general way, but I hope that gives you like the picture of how it it works internally. Okay. And now, uh, sorry, Hichen, uh, I don't know if we have a little bit of time for questions. I I'm five minutes, seven minutes late, but I will start at five minutes, seven minutes late anyway. So it's just an hour, I think. Okay. Any questions or? I, I I put a message to see if anyone had questions, but I think we can then go uh, to to Hachin uh, immediately because I, I don't think anyone put. It I, I do questions. have one. If if oh. we have time, I I do have one question. Yeah. Perfect. Carlos. Um, so regarding the you said basically that peel doesn't doesn't allow to multiply more than two polynomials together at at once. Is this? Yes. So this this means that you cannot have any polynomial with an expression degree uh, bigger than uh, two, or you can then in another constraint multiply uh, multiply the the resulting polynomial by another one and, and keep pushing the degree until you extend it to I don't know whatever you. you yeah, it's the, the second thing that you say. I mean, we can have expressions with more than three polynomials, but then we need to split them in the current version. By the way of pill, we are thinking in changing this. Okay, it's it's, it's a matter of. I mean, if you let your identities grow in degree, you can, I mean, uh, probably, I don't know how are you doing this in a scroll. Maybe you are letting your expression grow. And then at the final step, since you need to commit to polynomials of degree n, and if your expression is 3n, 
then you cut this in, in several polynomials there. Uh, in the current version of PIL, we cut this at, at this stage, at PIL stage. But okay. this is something that is in discussion. Maybe we, we are going to change it. It has pros and cons and yeah. But currently, I mean, if you need a degree three expression, I mean, uh, you're seeing- You need an extra constraint, basically. You need an extra constraint, basically. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Th thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, th thank you, that was excellent. And um, how does it compare to Hello? I think this is very similar besides, besides the polynomial commitments. But what is uh, opened by the polynomial commitments, that is the same, it's, it's a vanishing argument. Let me, uh, let me see if I understood your questions. You're asking first how this solution is different from Halo 2. Well, in fact, it is different because our computation model is a state machine. If I'm not wrong, Halo 2 is more circuit based. Halo 2 is, the commitment scheme is uh, based on, uh, uh, well, based on bulletproofs and this uh, inner product uh, and we are using Fry. So this is another difference. And what else did you ask me? Sorry, the other question was, I mean, these are what, different what paradigms. Is and and scroll is, in, is, 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 uh, is a hollow too, but they are changing uh, the inner product by, by K, yeah, right? Yes. But uh, it is also that, that's right. Mm -hmm. but, but that's right. The, the question of what, what, what is opened from, from the polynomial? You, you have one polynomial per commitment, and then you have one vanishing argument and, mm -hmm. and you open all the columns and open the vanishing argument once. That's how it works. Yeah, we open yeah, we open just at one random point uh, and we check, well, we do like a general poly polynomial with everything, mixing the, all the polynomials, you know, mi mixing all the, pol all the po we mix all the polynomials identity as usual with some randomness and powers of the randomness and we open just in one point, yeah. But to open in, ju in just one point, we need to do several queries in Fry to check that the opening is correct. In fact, since we are double, I mean, since our program is expanding to twice, we are doing currently 128 queries, which makes the proof quite big. And then uh, uh, it is already implemented some recursion step to uh, decrease the size of the proof. I'm, I, I answer you. Yeah, I think so. And, okay. and the, the, twi the twice expansion, it's because you can do only a multiplication between two polynomials. No, no, no. So, so it's because two. No, it's different. the twice is configurable, but uh, I mean, you can configure configure it. Uh, we don't have a clear idea of, uh, I mean, the, the, the thing is that if you expand more your polynomial, it means you have more points uh, we are doing like the, little, the the smaller possible because if we expand too much, then we have to deal with a lot of values, and we prefer to expand the minimum, which is twice, and and then do more queries. Uh, but uh, there are some trade-offs that we still need to 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 check. Okay, it's here in this in this. Here I'm saying that uh, you have a polynomial. In this case, I have a polynomial of. Uh, 100 and is 2 to the 10, so uh, 1024, and the extension is twice because now we are going to 2048. Uh, but you can configure it in any way, okay? But to be, sh to be secure, then you need to do more queries, okay? This is just a simple example, but uh, mm -hmm. these are the trade offs of Fry, okay? So, mm -hmm. thank you, Jose. The blow up, I think, uh, right. Uh, Hector said the correct name. Thank you, Hector. Okay, uh, give me the floor. Yeah, give, let's give the floor to Haichen. And okay, thank you yeah. so much. And you can call me, con contact me for any for any question or whatever. Uh, let me stop sharing. Okay, thank you. I'm I'll sure Haichen is gonna put everyone yeah. very clear about all these differences as well. It's just Stopping the sharing, I can I think I cannot. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's okay. Stopped. Yeah, it's stopped. yeah, yeah. Okay, it's stopped. Yes. Actually, okay. Now okay. His... Yeah. So you guys can see my screen. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Cool. Oh, good. Okay. 
Cool, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Hai Chen uh, from SCO. So today I'm going to like the, on the other side, like the uh, talking about how to build a Fibonacci circuit in the Halo Two. Uh, so last time, like uh, I think, yeah, talk about like the, the Halo Two or the Plunkish arithmetization. So you have like in the front end is a big giant like the two dimensional matrix where you have the like, different columns and then you have different rows. So in each column like the so there are four different types of columns in the in the Halo Two. So uh, so the in the first like the this color is the advice the first type is advice column so that you can use these columns to put in any like the private inputs all of the witness data like you, you want to put like these are all the advice columns you're going to put and then the second type of the column is called instance columns where you used to put any public inputs you can have like the one public input column or like multiple like all of the number of the columns are all configurable like in the Halo 2. Uh, and then the third one is that like the, uh, is like the, the fixed columns where you have the constants, like you could put any constant numbers into those fixed columns. Uh, and then the lookup tables, so usually it's a fixed value, like the uh, pre-compiled uh, lookup tables, so you can then all put into the fixed columns. And then the last type of the columns are the selector columns, which are usually usually used to control any uh, custom gates, uh, and then like all the lookups, you can all use the those selector columns to control those things. So as you can see, like the so the first two type of columns, they are going to vary over each proof and each proof instance. So every time you have like if you have different popping inputs and, and output, then you have will generate a different. Uh, uh, advice column like the witness in the advice columns for the second like the for the last two type of the columns these are uh, part of like the are, are determined so it's part of the circuit configuration can be per process and then storing the verification key or proving key so this like a, not going to change over like the different circuit instance <clears throat> so like the when writing the circuit in the Halo 2, it's not like the, so right now Halo 2 doesn't have any DSL front-end uh, language DSLs for writing the circuit. So everything you're going to write the circuit is using the Halo 2 APIs and it's all defined in the uh, Rust, like it's a Rust framework and you can use uh, the data structures and API provided by the Halo 2s to construct, to configure your circuit and then to filling your witness and then also uh, calling the prover to generate proof and then to, to also to verify your proof is, if it's correct or not. So that's like the, everything is going to be in the Rust. Uh, so here are like the, a few different uh, uh, data structure concepts, uh, which we have is that, uh, so this is like a, a few uh, data structures you're going to use to define the different type of columns as I mentioned before. So it's all start with the column, uh, but with different types. And you can see like the, with, if we put advice into here, and then this is an advice column. And then uh, if you put an instance here, then it becomes an instant column and so on and so forth. And the selector is like a, a, a kind of a, a, a subtype of the fixed column, but like you have like a, a syntax sugar called selector. And then the table column is also a kind of a syntax sugar. It's still like a part of the, uh, a subtype of the fixed column, but like it's like have a different name called the table column. So uh, to create a column in the Halo 2, it's mainly you're going to interact with the, uh, this like the, uh, this struct called constraint system. And it provides a bunch of the APIs you can use. For example, if you call like the advice column, then it will give you create a, uh, a column with advice and then fixed column to create a fixed column and so on and so forth. So I can see that like, this is quite straightforward to, and then here there's like a, a, a slightly like the uh, nuanced like API is called, a, one is called selector and a one is called a complex selector. So there's like a very, uh, uh, some like the small difference between the selector and the complex selector. So the selector means like it can be only associated with one custom grade and they're not going to be shared across different custom grades. And also it cannot be participating into the lookup argument. Uh, but the complex selector is a more general uh, way, like you can use that in any expressions, any constraint cascades or lookup argument, uh, things like that. So usually like the most of cases, like just the, in the ZK event, when we develop the ZK event circuits, 
becomes like a little bit more complicated. So most of the time we're using the complex selector, uh, but like the selector, why uh, the Halo 2 still have the selector API? Because there's like one small optimization uh, did in the Halo 2 prover is like if you're only using uh, this is kind of simple selector, then you can combine multiple selector into a single column. So I can save like a, a few number of columns and then uh, so you can use like a tag system to replace the selector. And then uh, there's like a few things like the, uh, the other APIs provided also by this constraint system uh, struct inside the Halo 2. The first one is like you want to enable the permutation check. Uh, as I remember, like the, the permutation check is helps you to connect between different wires. Like they can connect from the, like the one, uh, one row to another row. So you're going to like uh, enable some permutation check across different cells that you're going to copy from like the uh, one place to other, the other, uh, another place in the circuit. So what you're going to do is like you need to uh, explicitly call the enable equality, this API, and then apply uh, another input to this API is a column. So that means like it, once like some column is going to participate into this permutation check, you need to, uh, when you configure your circuit, like you need to explicitly call that enable equality on this column so that it knows like the certain values in this column will be copied from other columns or maybe copied to uh, some other column. So that this is like the one thing like you need to uh, call like this API to call. And then the second things like this is how to add a custom gate. So this is also another API provided by the constraint system called the create gate. Uh, so here you, you only need to uh, provide two things to, to this API. One is the name of this gate. So that's used can be uh, used to for debugging to know like which gate is, uh, as if certain things like this uh, constraint doesn't satisfy, you know the name of the, this custom gate. And then the second thing is like the, uh, which is a function, like a customized function you, you are going to define yourself. Uh, this function is only need to return a list of constraints uh, that include inside this custom gate. So the constraint here, you can just think of like it's a polynomial identities, which is kind of similar to, to Pew. Uh, but like the here, uh, every custom gate, you can have like a list of number of the constraints uh, of polynomial identity here. Like the, it could be one or like it could be many, like the cons uh, constraints uh, in associated with one single uh, custom gate. And then here uh, also the Halo 2 doesn't uh, limit the degree of the, those uh, constraints or polynomial identities. It's, like, uh, it's kind of basically a trade-off. If you use like a lower degree of those constraints, then the blow off factor like the, uh, in the extended field will be smaller. But if you're using higher degrees, then the blow off factor uh, for your extended field will be higher. And then in the final, uh, uh, the quotient polynomial, you then need to uh, truncate them into multiple, like uh, uh, if you like, uh, you truncate from for like four in degree uh, polynomial identity in the final end, you need to truncate into four uh, n degree, like degree of n polynomial identities. So you will basically ending like with uh, four, like the final uh, polynomial constraints in the end. So this is kind of like trade off. You can all play with with the Halo two. And in fact, like the, we, we realized that like, when we're developing the ZK even, so sometimes like a lower degree can like, lead to uh, smaller memory usage and also uh, uh, faster proving time because like sometimes if the degree is too high, then you need to uh, use like a very large uh, IFFT to on um, the extended field so that it causing like a uh, significantly slower the, the proving time. So we will sometimes like to break down higher degree polynomials into uh, like the multiple small, uh, lower degree polynomials uh, to, to automatically uh, reduce the, the degree uh, of those constraints. And then like the, the, the last like API I'm going to introduce is like add the, the lookup argument. So here is like the, you also, this is also some uh, one API provided by the constraint system I mentioned in the beginning. So you can call like this lookup uh, and then you also give like a name and also like a table map. So here, this function is that it's also another like a function you need to define. It returns a list of tuples of the query expression and then the table column. So why it's a, a it's a vector. So if like for example, if you're thinking like if you're looking up like one column, like one expression to a single column, for example, let's say ring check, you want to check a cell. Uh, yeah, if you want to check like a, a cell, like, uh, 
Let me see if I can enable the book pen. Yeah, if you want to check like inside one column, if you want to, uh, if there's one column, if you want to check one cell like that, and then there's like a range table, say like it's a, uh, this is a, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, I don't have a pen, so. Uh, so it's a range table, like if you want to check if it's belongs within to this range, then you just return uh, this cell like with the, with this range column here. So this is like a very simple uh, lookup. So just check like the range check for this cell. But in certain cases, like if you want to do like a, uh, some binary operations like the uh, XOR operations, then you have like the three inputs, like you have like three columns, you have like the, at least three expressions. So you have like the, you have A, B, and then A, X, or B. And you want to check like if this uh, is, is correct. So what you're going to do is like, you also pre-compile an XOR table also with three columns. So this is an XOR table, right? So you still have like, uh, you also have a like three columns, which is all possible, like the input of A and all possible input of B. And then the, this is the result you pre-compile, which is A, X, or B. Now, like we're going to do like, a, this is column A. So let's put a C, A, and then C, B, and then this is called a C out. So now like in, inside this API, what I'm going to do is like, you need to provide a vector of like the, uh, that's A cell. This is A cell will be corresponding to the, the column A. Uh, inside the lookup tables. And then the, the next tuple will be uh, the B cell. Uh, uh, with, with column B. Yeah, and then like this, and then also the C, uh, the C cell with like the column output. So this uh, you are going to, so this is like a tuple allows you to do like the, this multi, uh, so multiple elements, like you can look up a tuple within a, a uh, multiple like columns inside the lookup tables. That's why it, it, you can like return a vector of this tuple here. Okay. Uh, now, okay, so this is like the, so, so, but notice like the here, one thing uh, we notice here that this table column, like you can only provide the, the fixed values. So the table column, remember the table column is a subtype of the a fixed column. But when we design the ZK EVM, sometimes we find like the, we don't, we not only want to look up into uh, a fixed column. We want to also look, look, uh, uh, look up into an advice column, which you can also vary over the time of proof. For example, the memory operations can be all put into lookup tables so that inside your main uh, main circuit, you can easily check whether a stack or memory operation exists in certain lookup tables. So those lookup tables cannot be predetermined before like you know like your inputs of your circuit. That's why we added another uh, uh, another API inside Halo Two called the Lookup Any, which like here it looks uh, almost identity uh, identical to the previous API, but only seeing differences here that we we'll replace this table column into another expression that allows you to look up into an advice column, or even can uh, use like multiple columns to calculate uh, a, a virtual lookup tables that is constructed with the expressions. So that uh, allows you to look up into any columns or expressions. So give us like more flexibility when we configure the VK EVM. So to do that, but in today's like the Fibonacci example, we are going to only uh, show you how to use this lookup uh, uh, APIs, but like we, we because we, we don't really necessarily need to use the lookup any inside the Fibonacci examples. But if you're going to like audit the ZK event circuit, or if you look, check out the ZK event uh, circuit repo, you'll, you'll see like where most of the time we're using the lookup any uh, because it gives uh, like a more flexibility to, to configure the lookup tables. Okay, so uh, any questions so far? Uh, by the way, like if you have any questions, like you can stop and then like uh, stop me and ask me questions, or you can type in the chat so I can uh, well, keep like an eye on the chat, see like if anyone has any questions. Okay, so if there's no questions, like uh, I will continue. So now, like the, this is like the, a few steps for how to implement a circuit uh, in the Halo Two. So this is like the, for the basic uh, minimum uh, step you need to do, like the. 
the basic simple uh, circuit. So first you need to define a config struct that uh, includes like the, all of the columns you are going to use inside your circuit. So this is like there is a very simple uh, uh, struct inside the Rust. So only you need to include like what columns you, you need to going to use, but you can also like include some other like the things like inside a config. But like at least you're going to uh, provide like a sort of type of columns you're going to use. And then second, you need to find a chip structure that's going to config the, uh, the circuit. Basically you config the constraints, the custom gates or lookup arguments you're going to use uh, inside your circuit. And also you can provide uh, also provides the assignment functions. It's like how given certain input, how you're going to fit in into your, this witness table, like the, the, the giant matrix I showed before, like how you're going to fill those values into, uh, into those functions. So this is like a two things, uh, usually a chip you're going to uh, provide. And then the third step is going to define a circuit struct. Uh, for this circuit struct, you need to have a, a requirement is that you need to implement this circuit trait uh, that defined inside Halo 2. And then this circuit is going to be instantiate uh, at last given some input, and then that going to be feeding to the provers. The prover is going to call the circuit. And a circuit inside the SAT, uh, I will show you like the, uh, in a, in the next slide, what the circuit trick is. So the circuit basically needs to config their circuit, also uh, provide like a synthesized functions. Okay, so let's just look at the circuit trick, what, what does it contain? So it, the circuit trick needs to define uh, what is like a config uh, you're going to use. So this config is basically this config struct you defined uh, in the step one. And then the floor panel, I will going to explain the next slide. I'll just leave it here. And then the, uh, the, the next step is like you're going to, uh, you need to implement a function that says like without witness, how you're going to generate a circuit. So this is like the function is going to use to generate your proving key verification key. So that without even like a, a real instance like input to this circuit, you can still synthesize an empty circuit with like some random data, but like you still know how the circuit is configured. So you can still generate your proving key or verification key. And then the next step is configure like the, here uh, is that like, uh, so configure is here is that you, you need to uh, really like really config the, the circuits uh, using using the constraint system it provided here. So that's here is you need to define all your custom gates, like a lookup arguments or like anything you're going to use um, here. But finally, we'll just only return a config here, which is originally that the sum like the columns you're going to use. So then this config will be going to then pass into the synthesize function. And then the synthesize function is going to have two uh, input. One is the config you generate when doing the configure circuit. And second is the layouter uh, is uh, help you to uh, fit in into the witness inside your circuit. So now let's take a look at like uh, what happens actually inside the synthesis functions. Like what do you, what do you really need to do and what does the uh, what is like this layouter is going to participate in during the circuit synthesize. So every time, like when you synthesize, you, you can like synthesize a region. Uh, so this is a region, like it could be a, a single row inside a circuit, or it can be like multiple rows or even the entire circuit. You can have like only one region or like it can be some very irregular uh, shape uh, or like even non-continuous uh, area, like for these regions. So every time like you uh, you call the synthesis, uh, you, inside synthesis it can be like the step-by-step. -step. So every step uh, here, it's not every time. I think like it should be more, uh, to be more like the clear, so it should be every step inside the synthesis function. You can assign a single region and then you can have like many more regions when you do the synthesis. And then, uh, so, and, and then after like when you, every time you, uh, you put value into a single region, you define a region, then you will use like a predefined or, or you can even customize a layouter uh, in Halo 2 uh, to place the region inside the circuit tables. So right now there are two predefined layouters in the Halo 2. One is called a simple floor planner, uh, which I will uh, explain a little bit like the, so like the, how it works. So it's very, uh, it's a greedy planner. It is trying to find like the, the first place you can find to, uh, it can fit these regions and can then try to just put this region into that area. Uh, and then the second, uh, another uh, layouter inside Halo 2 called the V1. It's a dual path planner, which you're going to do some pre-processing and then try to find 
what's the uh, best way to lay out the, those regions to use uh, as fewer rows as possible. But inside the ZK even actually we're only using the simple floor planner. And this is because like all the regions we, we define inside the ZK even circuits, it, uh, we only have the regular uh, shapes. It's just the rectangular matrix shape. So it's basically, it's very easy to uh, whatever like the, the floor planner is going to do, like they just only uh, assign like the uh, each one row by row or like a, 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 like a, a rectangular by rectangular. That's very regular, so we only need to use that. And there's not really some optimization you do with uh, uh, with this layout here. So let's see like the, how the layout really like works inside here. So here, like inside a, a layout, like the, usually a region doesn't need to have the same shape as a custom gate. So for example, here I, I have defined one custom gate. Uh, enable like the for example, let's say if we enable this S zero selector. It will use this, these three uh, uh, cells inside the inside the advice columns, and it will put some certain constraints, say like the for example a zero plus a one equal to a zero next. So it could be like the, this uh, simple uh, custom gate, but like the, the region doesn't need to be uh, has the same shape when you do like circuit synthesis. It don't doesn't need to have the same shape as your uh, as your custom gate, but it has to be a superset of your custom gate. Say like the if this region cover uh, like this selectors here. And then the selector is enabled here. Then you must cover these three cells. So this is like a value region here. But if you only cover the single row here, if you want to say like I want to assign row by row, then it will basically the Halo two will give us an error say like you have invalid region. The certain cells it should be synthesized, but it is not a uh, uh, a cover inside this region. So it just basically give you some errors. So now like the just give some simple example like how the simple floor planner works. So let's say uh, for the region one, it's only like using a three cells, then you can easily find like say, okay, so the, the, the first row can uh, fit this region one, then just put into that. And then for the second region, uh, it's also quite simple. Like if it just uh, uh, this L shape region area, then it just like also cover, uh, put like again uh, onto the second row here. But for the third region, like if you say uh, the region three, so if I like the, uh, because the region three using like the column A0, A1, and S1, and I realize that uh, the A, A0 is already using the first three rows. So the region three can only start at, re, uh, at row four. And then for the region four, this is like kind of interesting things here. Uh, although like this is doesn't happen, uh, like I just uh, illustrated ex uh, illustration here, but usually you don't have like such an irregular shape. But if the region four are only using uh, the column A1, A2. So inside a simple floor panel, it just only check for the A1, you already use the row up to the, it already, uh, the, the, the cell, like you already use the row up to the fourth row. So that's the first available row uh, is like the fifth row. So that's going to say like, a, and then even though like the A2 only use the first two rows and even though like the, the row three for the A1 column, it's empty, but the simple floor panel doesn't just ignore that. I just see like, okay, the latest, like the largest row used inside the column A1 is the row four. So that's going to just start placing the region four in the fifth row here. Uh, but if you're using the V1 floor panel, probably we're going to just yeah, be doing some smarter things and then place the region four here uh, and then just put the value here. So this is basically like the how uh, a, Floor panel works. So this is kind of like a, so although like I think during the like the auditing or like reading the circuit, this doesn't like the really matters, but like it's a, some concept we can understand that what happens when you do the circuit synthesize. Okay, now let's go uh, jump into the circuit, uh, Fibonacci circuit examples uh, inside the Halo 2. <laughs> so I have like a uh, few multiple examples uh, for Halo 2, like the, uh, uh, for the Fibonacci. So and then you can see like we can have different, uh, you can define different layout for this Fibonacci circuit, even though it's a, just a simple Fibonacci functions. So the problem here inside the Fibonacci is like we given the F0 is equal to X, F1 is equal to Y. And we want to prove that uh, like say F9 is equal to Z here. So how are you going to define your circuit? So you, how are you going to design the circuit? The very uh, intuitive like naive way you see like the, is that every row is, Kind of a similar to the what Pew does, uh, it's like every row is your 
an execution state and I only apply one uh, execution here. And then so uh, it's kind of like an execution trace. So each time you say like A plus B will equal to C, and then you copy the next two cells into the next row and then say like, oh, and then continue this addition here. So one plus two will equal to three. Uh, and then like the copy the next B and C into the next row and so on and so forth. So you can continue your trace until you reach the index nine and it can stop here. So, so that you, because uh, you need to have the selector here because in, in, the, in the end of the bottom of the, the circuit. And so the circuit size can be like the form for you predefine a circuit size, let's say uh, a thousand rows, but you're only going to use like, let's say first 10 rows. Then you say like, I only put the, the a selector uh, which control the custom, uh, custom gate uh, on certain rows. So you only set like the selector to be one in the first 10 rows. And for the rest of rows, it can be zero. So the value uh, in, the, in the rest of rows doesn't really matter to your circuit. So, so this is like a very simple design. And then there's one, there's one last column here is the public input. Let's say the input X and Y is equal to one, then F9 want to prove is equal to 55. Okay, so when you want to uh, say like we designed the circuit as uh, this way, so now we first need to define, uh, the first step is define the circuit config, uh, which we say like, the, because we know there's three advice columns. So you see like that there's three advice column, one selector and then one instance column. So this is all you need for your config here. And then inside that this, uh, like it's a function inside your chip, it's called the configure. Uh, it's basically going to uh, generate uh, these like the columns here by using this meta, which is a constraint systems. You can call like dot advice column by creating like one advice column. And then uh, you can create like the column B, column C, uh, select a column, instance column. And then finally you will return this Fibonacci config here uh, from this config functions. Now what inside this part is that you need to uh, add constraints into your, uh, add constraint uh, for inside your circuits. Like how you want to define the relationship, the polynomial identities between these column A, B, and Cs. So because like this example is very simple. So it's only going to say like, we're going to uh, only going to use this like the uh, single addition here. So that's why we only have one single selector. So this selector here is like the, we can call like an add selector, uh, uh, sorry, an add custom gate. And then what you're going to say like uh, first, we say like we're going to enable a selector here. Uh, the selector can be any rows. So, any row like the, if the selector is set to one, that means like this custom gate is going to be enabled. So that's why uh, the selector is, doesn't have a rotation here. So, so first, like you say, I'm going to enable this selector is going to associate with this custom gate. And then we also going to query a cell inside the column A, column B and column C with the same, the rotation here as the current means like it has, the, has to stay at the same row as the selector rows. So let's say this selector at the row two, the selector is set to one, then this custom gate is going to uh, constrain this A2, B2, and C2 here. Now what's the uh, constraint you're going to uh, put onto the A, B, and C is that you, you use S to multiply the A plus B minus C should equal to zero. That means like the here, one selector is set to one, then A plus B need to equal to C, but one selector is equal to zero, then it doesn't matter like what value you put into the A, B, and Cs. That's like how you define a very simple custom like addition custom gate inside the, using the Halo 2. And this is like the polynomial identity actually you, uh, you uh, associate with this custom gate. It's basically uh, after you do like FFT, uh, commit this like the convert this column into a polynomial become like SX and the same like for A and B and C. So basically the polynomial identity here is like SX multiply AX plus BX minus CX equal to zero. So this is like the polynomial identity that you're going to put here. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, so yeah. So next step is that we're going to enable the permutation check. So what we're going to do like the, uh, the, the do the copy constraints. So see like what, what cells we need to copy from. So for each row you need to copy like the, the from previous row, you need to copy the value B into the next row, the column into the column A. And then the column C, you also need to copy like from uh, uh, 
the column C from previous row into the current row column B and so on and so forth. So you need to do like for every rows. That means like also uh, there's one last thing you need to do is you need to constrain uh, here, the output uh, in the last row you're going to hear is equal to your public input, uh, which is that you want to constrain this is equal to 55, for example. And also here, similarly, you also need to copy uh, the first row is like F0 into column A and F1 into column B here. I just like uh, omit that like inside of this uh, the slide, but also you need to do like the, the copy constraint on these two cells as well. So that means like the column A, B, C and the column I, uh, the instance column need to participate into this permutation check. So that's why inside doing, when, when you configure uh, the, the circuit, you also need to call the meta.enable quality, column A, column B and column C and the instance column. So these four columns are going to participate inside this permutation check. But like the here, you notice like uh, inside this uh, function, you only define say like that these columns need to participate in the equality check, uh, permutation check, but it doesn't say like the how you want to copy your cells. But actually that could be very complicated because you can have like, a, so in the Fibonacci it's very regular, but in some other complicated cases, it can be very irregular uh, pattern when you copy certain cells from uh, one row to another row. So that's like actually when you define the actual permutation, like the how you want to permutate these cells is when it's inside the circuit synthesis functions. Let's say like you want to, uh, I will show you like the inside the code, it would be probably easier to, to take a look at how, how we define that. But when you say like you want to say, I want to do the assignment for the row two, instead of directly filling the values, I will say like I will copy the value from previous uh, row here, previous cell cell B here and then copy that value to, to whatever here. So during the circuit synthesis, you will basically provide a permutation functions for all of the uh, columns that, uh, and then with the index here, uh, and uh, basically the offset inside each column and from which column to copy to another column uh, at a different offset. You will define this like permutation functions inside during the synthesis, uh, the circuit synthesis. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, take a look at the code. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let me just copy this uh, example here so you can also just directly read the, oh, sorry. No. All right, basically you need to, sorry, you need to remove the, remove the space here. Yeah, I copied the link here to the code, but I will also show you um, inside here. So this is like the, the whole code for the example one, uh, the Fibonacci circuit. So, uh, so this is like we already go over, which is a Fibonacci config uh, with like different columns. And then the Fibonacci chip, basically you need to contain a Fibonacci config here. It has like the few functions. So you need to construct, like how do you construct a Fibonacci chip? That's basically simple. And then this is like the, the, the part we mostly go over through is like the, the configure function is how you define the constraint inside the circuit. You need to create those columns and create a selector, create the instances. And then enable the enable uh enable the permutation check on column A B C and the instance column, and you create a custom grid here, uh using like the uh certain like the query and devices. Oh, uh here oh yeah I, I think I, yeah I think I probably uh forgot to uh tell you like what's the query does. So when you query a uh, selector, it will basically convert that into an expressions, and then when you query an advice column, it, and then you will need to provide a permutation that it's going to relative to the selectors. So this is it will all written inside, like it will return to you as a, an expression. And then, so you can do like a certain arithmetic, like the things on those expressions, you can do multiply addition or uh, minus. So you can see like you can ask times like A plus B minus C. So, and then this is basically an expression. And then that's, that's the constraint, like the only constraint that is uh, we added into this custom gate add. And then last, like in this configure, we're going to uh, return this uh, Fibonacci config. Now uh, in this functions, it also provides two, uh, two additional uh, functions, which is called assigned first row and then assigned row. So assigned first row will be a little bit uh, different. It's like when we trying to uh, say, uh, we're going to synthesize the first row, we need to copy the instance, like the, we need to copy like the A and B, on the instance column, which is the, our proper input. 
So let's see like the how we do like implement this assign first row is that like, you also want to uh, enable the selector in the first row. This is because uh, you also want to do like an addition check on the first row here. So you need to also check one plus one equals to two. So this is like the, you, need, you enable the uh, selector here. And then the A cell basically is co copy from to the column A is that you assign the device from the instance column. And then this is basically an annotation. It's like, this is F zero. Uh, you copy from the, uh, the instance column here. So the config is here is like the instance column. And then this is like the absolute uh, index inside the, inside the instance column. You copy from the row zero from the instance column into your column A with the offset zero. So here, this is an offset. Uh, this is kind of offset related to the selector here. So that means like the, say like if you want to say the first row, we, we don't going to use copy that you can still copy the copy input into the second row here if you enable the selector at the second row. Uh, so similarly for the B cell, you also do like the uh, assign advice from instance. So basically these two, uh, these APIs here is also uh, not only doing this uh, assignment for these cells, it also add the adding to the permutation uh, check, permutation function. So it knows that the, uh, for the like instance column row zero will be equal, uh, have like a, uh, will be equal to uh, this column A at the offset zero. So that's basically you added like this permutation check into uh, associated with this uh, API here. And then for the last one, you're going to just assign the device for the column C. So basically that's A plus B for like A cell plus B cell. So it's going to do that like you, you use the column here and then offset is zero, like at the same row as the A and B. So you will be uh, using the A cell, the value at, at the B cells, the value inside the B cell. So this is like how you uh, put into the, fit into the cell C here. And then you can return A cell, B cell, C cell, so I can copy to the next row. So this is basically what happens inside assign first row. So assign the next rows can be uh, similar. Uh, uh, it can be slightly different, but like very similar. So the similar here is like a, you, uh, when you assign the row, you're going to give like uh, two uh, assign cells. It's basically return from assign first row or assign rows. It's like, I need to know the, the previous B and previous C from the uh, previous rows. And then what you're going to do, like are you going to assign into your uh, previous B, uh, the value inside the previous B cell into this A, uh, column A here. So you basically call like a previous B dot copy advice and then copy into the column A here at off, offset zero. And then also you need to copy the, uh, the previous C into the column B here at the current row. And then finally you can uh, add, assign the, the C cell here is basically uh, the, the value B and the value C, the previous row like uh, value B and the previous value C added together into uh, the new C cell, new column C here. And then you can return to C cell. Uh, any question from, from this part? Okay. So let, let's see like the, what the, uh, uh, a circuit does. Like you can see, like, then you can now define a circuit here. Uh, the circuit will basically define, say, I'm going to use the Fibonacci config uh, and then use the simple floor planner. Uh, and then like the, the config here is basically very simple. So I just call this uh, Fibonacci chip to config the circuit and then return the config here. And then during the synthesize, you can then use this chip. It'll give you like a config here. You can use this config to construct a Fibonacci chip. And this Fibonacci chip will help you to assign, uh, uh, assign like the, do the circuit synthesis. So here you can see like that you can first call this assign the first row, uh, basically calling the, the chip dot assign first row. And I given like the, this region name, like uh, this like uh, meta region name here in the first row. And the fourth next uh, few rows, what you're going to do is like, you're going to call the chip dot assign row. And then given the previous B and the previous C here as the input to the assign next rows. And then you can, you know, like, because we know we are going to compute the F9. So that's going to like the, uh, would be like this. So because here we compute in the first row, we compute the F2. So uh, we can, we, now we need to iterate this I from three to Z, C to nine which are like going to say like, uh, we're going to compute F9 at the last. 
And then one last thing is like after compute everything, like after synthesize row by row, the last in the last row, uh, uh, inside the circuit, like the inside the circuit synthesize, you need to expose the the C's a uh, previous C into the uh, uh, into the public cells. Uh, so in uh, connect uh, the the last output from the last row, uh, into your public input instance. So there's like one more API inside your inside the Fibonacci chip. It's basically called expose public. It's basically it does very simple things. Like say like that we just constrain the instance given the cell you already assigned. And then you, you say like these two, you just assert the last uh, output row, the output of the last row, you are equal to uh, the second instance at a certain like the absolute offset inside of the instance row, which is the row number two. So this like the, uh, this line basically is adding this copy constraint for the last, uh, last row here. Okay, then inside the examples here, you, you define the K equal to four, means that our circuit, uh, the K is, means like the, our circuit is the size of the, the number of rows inside circuit is two to the four with equal to 16. And then you can define the A and B and output, which is the public input. And then you will create this circuit uh, and then you provide the circuit here into a mock prover and then the public input. Uh, and then like you can, so the mock prover is not the real prover. It's going to basically uh, synthesize the circuit and then check the all, all the constraints you define inside the circuit and then make sure uh, it, it, it can satisfy or not. So this is kind of very simple. Uh, like this is not the real prover does. It, it doesn't like the really do the polynomial commitment, uh, although they do other things like the here. So, but this is like easy way you can check your, if your circuit is correct or not. And if you say like, a, then the prover should here as a satisfy should be satisfied. But if you're going to modify the public input uh, like a little bit, then if you uncomment this, like uh, if the constraint is, if your circuit is sound and complete, then it, seems, it means like the here, uh, if you uncomment this column, then uh, this assert will fail. Okay, so this is like the example of the Fibonacci example one. So uh, anyone has any questions so far? Okay, so if no more questions, like I can go to a little bit, like I know like this, I uh, have like five minutes later. So uh, five minutes, more, five more minutes. So the problem we noticed like inside of pro, uh, example one is that there are basically too many uh, duplicate cells. So you, every time you need to copy two cells from previous row to next row, there's a lot of uh, duplicate cells, not efficient. So a better solution is that we can use the rotation to access to the multiple rows. That means that you no, you no longer need to do like the, uh, the execution trace row by row, but you can of course row to do the execution. So why not we just like do a single uh, advice column and then you put like the, a single Fibonacci trace here and you just define the, the relationship across uh, different rows inside this single advice columns here. And other things are, are very similar, the selectors, the instance like that, but only like you reduce from three advice columns to one advice column. So now the only thing you're going to change here is that you call like the, uh, when, you can, uh, when you generate a custom gate, you first define like the, similarly you, you query uh, a selectors. And then now you are going to say A, B and C is basically uh, the rotation of the current row as the same as the selector. And then the next row of the selector and then the next, the second row uh, relative to the selector rows. So now your A, B and C is like the, uh, from the single advice column but with the different rotation here. And then you can still define the ex expression like polynomial identity here as like say it's, it's the same. It's like S times the A plus B minus C equal to zero. That's like your, your constraint associated with this add custom gate. Now here, the things that will be a little bit different in the polynomial identity is that it becomes like SX times AX plus A omega X, which is the next row inside your A and then minus the A omega square X this is basically uh, this cell, like the, the, the next second row uh, inside, the, inside, inside the column A. So this is like the, the polynomial identity actually associated with this custom gate. So there's also like a code here. So I'll just quickly show you like the, so it basically looks very similar. So the only thing like it says like the, you need to, uh, the, the, the gate is a little bit different. Now the assignment we also did, I guess, a little bit different. 
So now like the notice like the, the problem with like if you want to assign like the, you want to uh if you want to do this uh region by region the uh, circuit synthesis, you are enter into some questions like the different regions may have overlaps because it's an L shape. Uh, if you want to cover this cascade, you need to cover this L shape here. That means like if you want to synthesize the next things, like you also need to have overlap between different regions. So actually inside the Halo 2, it doesn't allow different region has overlap. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, do a, a single region assignment. This basically we see like the, this region will cover the entire Fibonacci tables, but you can still do that. It's like, you can say, I uh, enable the first two uh, rows of the selectors, and then I will still do the similar things. You, uh, you copy the instance uh, into the, now into the first row and then into the second row here. And then for the rest of rows, you can do, uh, basically you can add from previous two rows here uh, into the next row. So you, basically you, you, you calculate this row, although as an offset row, but it's basically, if you only have a single region, so this is the absolute uh, number of the row inside your circuit. And then, and then remember, this is like a little bit careful here is that uh, once like a selector is enabled, you're going to use like, you're always going to check this, the, the next three rows inside the, uh, inside the column A. So that means like uh, if we are, uh, for the last two rows inside the region, the selector cannot be enabled because you are not going to fit into the, the values uh, onto the uh, to, to the next rows. I mean, like you say, like if row equal uh, is smaller than the uh, number of rows minus two, we are going to enable the the selector here. Otherwise, we are not going to enable the selector. And then the rest of things will be quite similar. So only things like inside your my circuit here that is going to call one single assignment uh, here. And then this assignment will be configuring, like putting the witness into the entire circuit tables. And then finally, you also need to expose the output into the, uh, and then assert there is a equal to the public in instance, public input. Okay, so that's like the, uh, a simple example, like in a, a, a difference like the, between the Fibonacci one and the Fibonacci two, like example two. Uh, any questions? Okay, I see like, what would go wrong if you didn't, uh, if, uh, if you didn't enable the selectors into the original Fibonacci circuit, could you have the add gate return vector A plus B minus C instead of vector? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think you can still do that. But the question is like, a, it means like you are going to enable this custom gate for every row. That means like even you're not going to use all the, the rest of rows. Let's say the circuit sometimes like it doesn't have like perfect shape, like the number of rows you need to going to use inside the circuit. So you definitely have some rows like with a, which are the pattern rows. So if you're not going to enable that, then I mean like if certain like people like found like they put it into different numbers here, you're also going to check on this uh, uh, custom gate here. Uh, so that we usually always in, uh, associate a custom gate with certain uh, selectors here. Does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, if no more questions, like I'll go into uh, last examples like the, so this example is going to show you like a little bit, like see how to use the lookup argument inside the people, uh, inside the Halo 2. So in order to use the, uh, the, the lookup table, we need to make the Fibonacci transition function a little bit more complicated. Let's say we want to do like a, if, like we want to define two different relations, like if it's like the, on the even index here, we're going to add uh, the previous two uh, elements inside the sequence. But if it's an odd uh, index, we're going to add like the, we're going to do the X all of the previous two elements. So you will get like a different uh, Fibonacci sequence. Let's say like I still have a one and one in the zero and one positions. And the second, uh, in the, when n equal to two, like you basically add them together. But for the, when you calculate the uh, uh, and, uh, F3, and it becomes like you need to do like the X all between one and two with, and it give you the three and then you add two and three to five and do an X all between three and five and it becomes six. It's like a slightly different things. 
So as we know, like the, when we trying to write the XOR, define the XOR inside a circuit, it's very complicated to do that. So in order to reduce the, so usually when you do like inside a circum or r one circuit, you're going to break down into the, you need to bit by the numbers and then you do like bitwise uh, operations for the XOR. So it's like, a, it requires a lot of custom gates to do that or constraint to do that. Uh, so inside the, inside the plunk or Halo 2 or maybe inside PU, you can use the lookup things like to do that, which you say like we pre-compile a lookup table here, which I uh, have like the, it lists all of the possibility like for uh, say like A and B can be zero to three, uh, 31 and then zero, zero to 31. And they take like the combination of this like A and B and you pre-compile the output of the A, X or B here. So that means like the, this table uh, has to, has like the two to the 10, like a thousand, and 24 rows to put into this single table here. So you pre-compile these tables. So every time when you want to do the XOR here, so you also like now you, you have to, uh, you need to have uh, two selectors, oops. So you need to have like the two selectors. Uh, so selector, select the add is going to say like the, in this row, I'm going to do the addition here. It's, it's like add one plus one equal to two. For the next row, like which is the uh, the odd index here, we're going to do the XOR here. So basically you're going to configure the, the selector uh, like one zero one zero and the zero one zero one for the X, uh, for the selector XOR. And then, so inside the config here, now you have a little bit more things. You still have three advice column, okay, A, B, and C. Like you can also do like a single, uh, single column, but like for the simplicity, like I just show you uh, an extension from example one, but you can also like the do from exa example two, have like a one single column. You can still make that, uh, make this circuit works. Uh, so right now, like we still use three advice column and then can do like a one selector for the addition gate and a one selector for the XOR gate. And then also you have three table columns with, which, which will contain the pre-compiled XOR results for like the, within the range of the 32 here. And then you also still have the instance column here. So now the only thing different is that inside your uh, circuit, you will do like a, a called meta.lookup. That's going to initially a, a lookup argument. And then similarly, you do like the, you, you enable a selectors and you query the column A uh, with the same rotations and then column B with the same rotation and then column C with the same rotations. Now you return a vector of tuples. But here it says like, a, are going to multiply the selector with the uh, with the column A uh, with value A, and then we're going to map this value into uh, into the the first column inside the XOR table, and then as multiply uh, the the B here the RHS uh, right hand value, and then that going to map uh, you're going to check map into the the second column inside the XOR tables, and then finally the output the S multiply output will map to the, the third column inside your uh, lookup tables. So basically like the, this is like your lookup argument for the, for the XOR operations inside the lookup. And if you look at the code, uh, which is, this is example four, because previously we used this like the material for like some other <laughs> tutorials. So like uh, it's actually the example four. So the example four here, <clears throat> you can see we configured the, the XOR column and then you also need to enable the equality here. You configure your uh, ads, uh, add custom gate, but here you need to just query the cycle for S add. Uh, and then for the lookup, which is the XOR of parts, you need to query for the XOR uh, selector here. And this is basically the same things you can see. So now uh, inside the circuit synthesize, there's like a one more step. So this is like one assign for the entire circuit region, which is similar to the, <coughs> Similar to the to the example two, but now you have like one additional uh, uh, function provided inside this chip. It's called a load table. So this is like you're going to pre how do you going to fit in your uh, XOR table here? So basically you iterate between like the for for the left hand uh, value and the right hand value like the from zero to thirty one, zero to thirty one, and then you iterate all possibilities, and then you assign the table here, say like the uh, into the first column. At a certain index, you put like this value RH here and RHS here into the second row, and then you you compute them like the yourselves here, and then what's the result of the XOR between the A and B? 
and then put it into the third, third column inside the lookup tables. So, and then what happens inside the circuit is that you will call like the first also like the in the synthesize, your first deal like is load the, your tables, you load your lookup tables. And then you're going to assign the rest of things like which is the, all the other bytes things. And then finally you will assert the result is correct by comparing to the to the public input. And then that's like the, uh, how are you going to do that? Like the, the rest of things will be similar. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then you can check out like the, this code, you can just do like the, uh, yeah, you can you can do like the uh, cargo build and then you can go like cargo test, do like Fibonacci example one. I'm going to say, okay, the test has been checked. And example two, so basically that's doesn't that like give it, uh, give you like much of like the intermediate outputs here. So it's just going to check like whether it's uh, it passed or not. So that's like how you're going to run that. Okay, uh, that's all of the presentation I have for today, like the, for the Fibonacci examples. Uh, now, if you have any questions, I can accept any, uh, answer any questions if you have. And thank you everyone. Do we have any questions? Uh, no? Yeah, I think like the no one has questions. So okay. I think if no one has questions, like so we can end today's sessions. And then the next session will be talking about the ZK EVM circuit design, in the uh, more like a high level overview on um, Monday, uh, the ne next week. And then the last session will be on Tuesday. It's going to have the uh, some like lessons learned when developing the the CK even circuits and also like general uh, circuit uh, circuit designs. And thank you everyone for here and then we'll hope to see you uh, on Monday. Yeah, the, it's getting better every day, these lessons. <laughs> so uh, thank you, thank you, Haishan. That was really insightful. Thank you, thank you, Jose. Yeah. And um, next uh, session three, see you then. Cool, yeah, thank you, Chris. And thank you everyone for thank attending. You.